show is, is different and has different issues, problems, fascinations. Um, and so you just look at it and you decide how do I want to tell the story this time or how do I think the story should be told according to this opera that's in front of me. And that just doesn't cease to fascinate me. And you can be like this all behind it or then if a person is there I can then be the next one behind the person. But we are one group. This is what is important. For example, you could be... The opera A Flowering Tree by John Adams is a story, is a fairy tale and it's a story about transformation and transcendence. It's an Indian fairy tale. It's about a girl a young woman who finds out about an amazing ability that she has herself to transform herself into a flowering tree. So it's a story of transformation, having to go through trials, a bit like magic flute. So one of the characters on stage, one of the three soloists, there are only three soloists, is the storyteller. He's at the origin of everything. He sits there, he waits for his audience to be there, and he starts to tell us the story. And um, at the same time when he tells it, the story comes to life in front of our eyes. There's a lot of dance in it. And there's a lot of chorus singing in it because um, a story can be told, but if there is no audience, then the story is non-existent. So we have a village community, and there are the chorus, who are listening and then actually taking actively part. It's a very empty space. It's like a dance piece. And then it's a really a couple of sparse scenic elements in it, like the trees and the bed. John Adams' art, of course, because his art is truly to write operas that do tell a story. 